Your export settings could be impacting your music and how it sounds. Today I want to talk about export settings, what they mean, and why it matters. Now for Ableton, I'm going to talk about each of these different sections individually so you understand what they are, what they do, and how they impact the end result. I'm even going to touch on something that you may not have ever heard of, but has a huge impact depending on what type of plugins you're using. Now when it comes to your export options, first you're going to have the selection choice. Selection choice is either going to export from your master, or if you do the drop down here, you'll see you can export all individual tracks or each individual track on its own, or you can do selected tracks only. Most of the time, you want to export your master, which is gonna be everything going through the master chain and then exported into the format of your choice. Now, there are three ways to set this up in Ableton. If you just hit export and do nothing, all of your audio inside of the arrangement view is gonna be exported. This doesn't really allow for any tails or effects, so this isn't advised, but it is an option. Your second option is to loop the section that you want or Command or Control L. If you loop it, or you can alternatively just select all of the tracks that you want, what this does is this will tell the DAW exactly what to export when you're exporting. And then your last option is to manually put it in for the numbers here. You can change the section, start, and length. So the rendering options section is pretty self-explanatory. The include, return, and master effects will be grayed out by default. This is because it's used for the exporting individual tracks option. And then if you wanted to change that, just switch to export to individual tracks and then turn it on. The next one is render as loop. That is basically just making seamless loops so that it makes sure that it starts and begins at the same time. Convert to mono is just making it an all mono track and removing all the stereo information. Normalize is used to bring all of the tracks to the same volume without having to go through and adjust the volumes yourself. And then you have the create analysis file. It's good to have it if you want to move from studio to studio. That way you make sure you have the analysis information that you need. But if you're going to be continuing the same project in the same DAW on your computer, it doesn't really make sense to have analysis file because it just continues to clutter up your system. Now, in terms of sample rate, sample rate is super important to pay attention to. This is where you're going to want to match the sample rate of your global project. And how you check that is by going to your menu and looking under audio. You'll be able to select your sample rate there. I'll show you right now. To adjust your global sample rate, you'll simply go to your settings and preferences, and then you'll open up the sample rate section, which is under audio. And then you'll see here that all you'll need to do is change it. I recommend 48 kilohertz as I have here and then have it set to high quality mode. One very crucial thing that you have to pay attention to, you have to export in the same global sample rate. So in Ableton, there's a little speaker right there. Just make sure that you pick that one. Reason being is if you don't, sometimes that will cause issues where your plugins will just be completely bypassed. Now let's cover the PCM, which is pulse code modulation. It's basically a raw high quality waveform. This should be turned on basically if you wanna do anything except for send a quick reference mp3 for listening purposes. There are a few different types of files that use PCM wave data, mostly WAVE, AIFF, and FLAC. There's really not much difference between the WAVE and AIFF, except for the AIFF has more metadata storage options for artwork and other meta tags. The main difference between FLAC and the other two types of files that I've mentioned, FLAC is half the size of AIFF and WAVE. Mastering engineers will typically want WAVE or AIFF, and distributors will usually accept any of the three options. Now, bit depth, I didn't really know a whole lot about bit depth before this, so I had to do some research, but basically bit depth is the resolution of each sample in the waveform. So you should keep it at 24, which is the default. You should only change it to 16 bit if your digital distributor requires it. When you have your bit depth set to 24 or higher, you're gonna have a much better dynamic range and a much better signal to noise ratio. Dither is another funny one. Dither is noise that's added to the signal when reducing the bit depth. So unless you render it to 16 bit, you can just leave dither off. Now, if you do want to render down and you wanna use dither, I recommend triangle option, which is the default. If you want an MP3 as well, you just click on the toggle here. It'll also make an MP3 as well as a wave. If you don't want the wave, you can just undo the encode PCM. That'll make sure there's only MP3 that gets exported. MP3s are great for sharing as well as listening for reference, but overall, you're mostly gonna want a WAV format. 
If you weren't aware, Ableton can actually work with video as well and export into video formats. If you're not working with video, you can just leave this off. Now, once you click on export, you'll be given the option to name your file as well as give it a destination. A few key tips to stay organized, have a folder that is labeled as 01 January and then the year. So 2024 for this year and then do 02 February 2024. The reason is for that, you can actually keep it in alphabetical order. You will also see that I have a collabs folder, finished folder, ideas folder. This is another way that I keep myself organized. How you organize yourself is completely up to you. However, I think it's a great idea to have a system in place. Otherwise, you end up losing ideas, you end up not being able to find certain projects when you want them. And overall, you really have no idea how far you're going because you're just throwing a bunch of projects into a folder. When you're exporting, my recommendation is to follow that system. Another great idea is when you're exporting for a collab, you want to put the BPM as well as the key in the track name. That way, the person that you're collabing with doesn't have to guess. Now, if you are exporting for a collab, what you'll want to do in this case is make a separate folder for the collab stems, and then you'll want to go to your rendered track option and select all individual tracks, or if you have tracks on there that you don't want to send over, you can select those tracks and then do selected tracks only. Hopefully this was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions about this in the comments, I'll be happy to answer them. But overall, this should give you a much better idea of how to export and what the export settings mean in Ableton Live.